Hello and welcome to the Arms Control Center. A 4,000 pound HC-4000 British bomb was found on August the 30th, 2017 in Frankfurt during construction work. According to the news, the evacuation of 60,000 people has been scheduled. The Arms Control Center presents data about the bomb and simulates its explosion to illustrate its effects and help the German authorities take reasonable safety measures which would not disrupt the economic and social life of the vicinity of the bomb at unnecessary distances. At the same time, our simulations and scenario will provide an educational video in the framework of the Arms Control Certificate awarded by the Arms Control Center to all its members. The total weight of the bomb found in Frankfurt is roughly 4,000 pounds, that is 1,942 kilograms, and it is a high capacity bomb, hence the HC-4000 name of the bomb. The high capacity bombs were used for general bombardment purposes on operations where maximum blast damage was required. The whole HC series included bombs of 2,000, 4,000, 8,000 and 12,000 pounds. Regarding the HC-4000 bomb in question, there are six versions of the bomb, Mark 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. In the screen we now show Mark 1 and now we show Mark 2 to 6. Nose pistols were used for fusing and in particular Mark 1 used one nose pistol number 27, 42 and 44 while its other two side fuse pockets were not used. On the other hand Mark 2 to 6 used three nose pistols for fusing of the same number number 27, 42 and 44 the crucial issue here is what mark the discovered bomb is so that we can specify the type and amount of explosives used for filling. By starting all the possible fillings, we observe that the worst case scenario would involve a Mark 6 HC-4000 bomb filled with 3,294 pounds of Torpex explosive whose relative effectiveness factor is 1.3 yielding a total explosive energy of 4,282 pounds of TNT equivalent. We have now established that a worst case scenario involves the explosion of 4,282 pounds of TNT on a flat, rigid, clean and thermally reflective surface without any other sources of blast, absorption or attenuation except for the targets which in our case can be, for example, a human being or a building. Using computer simulations, we estimate that an effective overpressure of 0.5 psi causing glass fracture could hardly exceed a distance of 2,000 feet roughly 600 meters. Moreover, an effective overpressure of 5 psi causing eardrum rupture is not expected to exceed a distance of 400 feet, roughly 122 meters. In the same way, an overpressure of 30 psi, which is the threshold for lung damage, is not likely to exceed 180 feet, roughly 55 meters. Finally, an effective overpressure of 100 psi, which is the threshold overpressure for lethality, cannot possibly exceed a distance of 100 feet, roughly 30 meters. The above estimations are related to the effects of blast wave, 
but there are other sources of injury, such as primary and secondary fragments of the explosion, or injuries due to the violent displacement of human bodies which can impact unyielding surfaces. These effects are not studied here in detail, but they are not expected to be significant at distances where glass fracture is unlikely, that is, larger than 600 meters. This is also supported by Christofferson's formula for fragment range, which gives a, a distance of 1,840 feet for an explosive quantity of 4,282 pounds TNT. We see here the limit set by Christofferson's formula, roughly 560 meters. We can only approximate the potential explosion site using open information from various news websites, but for the purpose of our scenario, we don't need to know the precise potential ground zero. According to the news, the bomb was found in a construction site near Wismarer Street and Google Earth shows such a place, which we will now choose as a potential explosion site for our educational scenario. Please note that this place is only selected for educational purposes and may not be related to the actual potential explosion site. Our Google Earth map shows the risk zones as concentric circular zones around the possible explosion site. We will switch on and off the outer zone, which is the zone of 0.5 psi causing glass fracture. We can estimate the total area of that risk zone by using the ruler of Google Earth Pro. As we see, the 0.5 zone covers an area of 1.17 square kilometers. The effective overpressure of 5 psi causing eardrum rupture and incapacitation is not expected to exceed a distance of 400 feet, roughly 122 meters. We switch on and off that zone. And we can easily understand the radius of the risk zone by looking at the map. In the same way, an overpressure of 30 psi is the threshold for lung damage and that zone is not likely to exceed a distance of 180 feet, roughly 55 meters. We can zoom in so that we can understand the effects better. This is the 30 psi zone. And finally, the 100 psi zone, it uh, indicates the, the zone where everybody runs a risk of dying. This is what we call the threshold for lethality zone. And as we see, it is over radius of 30 meters and we can estimate the total area of the lethal zone which is of course very small zero point zero one square kilometers less than that The above estimations are related to the effects of blast wave, but there are other sources of injury, such as primary and secondary fragments of the explosions. 
These effects are not studied here in detail, but they are not expected to be significant at distances where glass fracture is unlikely. This is also supported by Christofferson's formula for fragment range, which gives a radius of 1,840 feet, roughly 560 meters, for an explosion of 4,282 pounds, which is the explosion we are studying now. Please note that the scenario studied in this webinar and the results of our simulations are only for educational purposes as they have been based on the available information appearing on the news. The citizens of Frankfurt and any other interested person or body should follow only the instructions of their governmental authorities and bomb disposal experts. The Arms Control Center will not be responsible for any decisions you make or you don't make based on our report. You can find more information about this study and more relevant articles on our website. I am Professor Dr. Theodor Leolius, Professor and Divisional Director of the Hellenic Army Military Academy and Director of the Arms Control Center. Thank you for watching this short webinar.